And we see also that uh, other fo forces within the world government are using the kind of fear which people have of what's coming to get them to comply with their, what they want them to do. And one of the things you'll see in this time is the fear, which is a natural fear, will be used as a way in which people will be forced into submission to what the government wants, which will end up with submission to what the Antichrist wants. And he will get his power through offering a solution to the things which are making people afraid, but will give them an answer, which will turn out not to be an answer. And it will lead to the time of trouble. <coughs> and it will drive unbelievers to accept the offer of the solution which the Antichrist is offering. Uh, <coughs> in the book of Daniel, chapter 11, there's a prophecy which is partly about a man called Antiochus who was going to come and set up an abomination of desolation in Jerusalem, but it merges into prophecies of the end times relating to uh, the Antichrist and the people alive at that time. He says, the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out <coughs> great exploits. Those are the people who understand shall instruct many, yet for many days they shall fall by the sword and flame by captivity and plundering. This time, God wants to raise up a people who will be strong and will stand for him. We're not yet in that time, but we can see similar circumstances coming to us. He wants us to be a people who will be strong, who carry out exploits, who will do God's will, and will instruct many uh, in the truth of the word of God. And there are people who are doing that today who are also subject to what it says here, falling into captivity and plundering. People who will be strong and know their God and do exploits and will know that the kingdom of God is coming. And <coughs> Jesus said, when you see these things beginning to happen, lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. <coughs> and he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees when they're already beginning budding. You see and know for yourselves that summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. <coughs> Another interesting verse, which is a little bit debated what it actually means. But in the last part of this passage, which we read today, Jesus is beginning to tell us what to do and how to survive physically and spiritually. So I hope you pay attention because this is probably the most important part of this talk. Jesus says a number of things. That's all he speaks about the fig tree and this generation. When you see the sign of the fig tree, when you see these things happening, then know that Jesus is coming. Uh, there's a bit of a debate about what the fig tree means. Does it mean actually the rebirth of Israel as a nation? Now, there are prophecies in the Old Testament which speak about Israel as the, the fig, fig tree and as the vine. Uh, when Jesus departed, he cursed the fig tree and it withered, which some people saw as the withering of the national life of Israel. So the contrast, when you see the blossoming of the national life of Israel, uh, then that is a sign of the second coming of Jesus. And we're certainly the generation which has seen the blossoming of the national life of Israel, the remarkable uh, restoration of Israel as a nation, which is a sign of uh, the fulfillment of Bible prophecy and of the second coming of Jesus. The other explanation of the fig tree is that it just means that when you see all these things which I've spoken of coming to pass together at this time, then you know that this is the time which is leading to the second coming of Jesus. <coughs> now, there are some people who say, yeah, these things have always happened. There have been famines and wars and earthquakes. Yeah, that's true. But they haven't always come at the same time with the same intensity. What you're seeing now happening is all the signs of the second coming taking place around us in the world. When you see all the signs coming together, <coughs> then you know that is the sign of the second coming of Jesus. And if you're alive at that time, you are the generation which is going to see the fulfillment of it in the return of the Lord Jesus. I believe we are that generation, which is why it's relevant to us today. And that we should recognize that Jesus is coming. Don't be like the scoffers who say, what's the sign? Where is the promise of his coming? Uh, but believe, be among those who pay attention to the signs and prepare for the coming of the Lord. 
Uh, Jesus goes on to say that uh, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Jesus' words are not going to pass away. So the, one of the ways in which we're going to survive and overcome in this time is to believe the word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but worth, my words will by no means pass away. The word of Jesus is the word which God has given us from eternity into our time and space to teach us how to live. And he's saying here that what, if he says something's going to happen, it's going to happen. No matter what the world says, no matter what you're, even you think about it, if it's something which God has said through Jesus Christ, it's going to happen. And it's the word of God. And it is happening, or it's going to happen, or it has happened. And if we believe the word of God, it's an anchor for our soul. Something which is going to keep us stable and safe in these times. The things which will happen in the last days are God's judgment on a sinful world that's rejected his commandments and the salvation offered through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Therefore, the solution is to believe, to believe the word of God, to believe in Jesus, to accept him, to repent of sin and believe the gospel and be saved. Those who believe it will have a hope and a future no matter how dark the world gets. 